Hello, I'm here to present our paper in BRAIN entitled Platelet-Derived Growth Factor Beta is a Potent Inflammatory Driver in Pediatric High-Grade Glioma. Pediatric high-grade gliomas have distinct anatomic locations as well as genetic profiles. Half of these tumors arise in a midline or brainstem and typically have H3.1 or 3.3 K27N mutations and they have the worst overall survival. The other half of these tumors arise in the hemispheres of the brain. They are typically histo and wild type, but can occasionally harbor the H3.3 G34RB mutations, and they have slightly extended survival. To begin our studies, we took human pediatric high-grade gliomas from either the hemispheres or the midline and performed RNA sequencing using the nanostring platform. When looking at differentially expressed genes, we see that the diffuse midline gliomas have greater expression of inflammatory-related genes compared to the hemisphere counterparts. Also, when looking at inflammatory pathways involved, we see that again, the diffuse midline gliomas are more inflammatory than the hemispheric tumors. To validate our findings using an immunocompetent mouse model, we induced either brainstem tumors with the H3.3 K27N mutation or hemispheric tumors that were histone H3.3 wild type and perform nanostring analysis. When looking at the inflammatory pathways, we see that again, the diffuse midline gliomas are more inflammatory than the hemispheric tumors. When analyzing only the hemispheric tumors from the human data set, we see that two distinct groups arise. Hemispheric group one tumors, which are highly inflammatory, and hemispheric group two tumors, which are not inflammatory. Interestingly, the hemispheric group 1 tumors, which are more inflammatory, have a significantly decreased survival compared to the hemispheric group 2 tumors. To further analyze the inflammatory processes involved, we induced hemispheric tumors in an immunocompetent mouse model, driven by either PDGF ligand A or PDGF ligand B overexpression. When looking at PDGF receptor alpha expression on the surface of these tumors, we see that there is no difference. However, when looking at the inflammatory pathways involved, we see that PDGF-B-driven tumors are more inflammatory than the PDGF-A-driven tumors. And much like our human data, we see that the PDGF-B-driven tumors, which are more inflammatory, have a significantly decreased survival compared to PDGF-A-driven tumors. We next histologically characterized our human data set to determine what immune cell types are present. We see that there are very few CD3 and CD8 T cells within these tumors. However, we see that there is significant infiltration of IBA1 positive macrophages. When looking at our mouse tumors, we see the same thing. There is significant infiltration of these IBA1 positive macrophages within these tumors, with PDGF-B driven tumors having significantly more macrophages than the PDGF-A driven tumors. We next wanted to determine what the identity was of the infiltrating macrophages. Through CD45 and CD11B staining, we see that PDGF-B-driven tumors have more lymphocytes. They also have significantly increased infiltration of macrophages. Through LY6G and LY6C staining, we see that this increased infiltration of macrophages is not due to the number of microglia, but instead due to the number of bone marrow-derived monocytes coming from the blood. We next wanted to determine if reducing macrophage infiltration can extend patient survival. Through a variety of chemokine knockout mice, we determined that CCL3 is a key chemoattractant for these cells. This was consistent for both PDGF-A and PDGF-B-driven tumors. In conclusion, our studies reinforce the notion that pediatric high-grade gliomas are immune cold with respect to infiltrating T cells, but demonstrates that these tumors have significant infiltration of macrophages. Our studies show that PDGF-B and CCL3 drive the recruitment of bone marrow-derived monocytes to the tumor, which in turn promotes tumor growth. Our studies provide a foundation for future pediatric high-grade glioma immunological studies. And lastly, they demonstrate that genetically engineered mouse models of pediatric high-grade glioma are useful tools for probing the tumor microenvironment and should be further considered when designing targeted therapies. With that, we would like to thank all the co-authors, contributors, and funders for this study.